Did you ever play that game of telephone as a kid where one person, the first person would say a phrase, usually one that would be easily misunderstood, and then they would tell the next person who would listen, and then tell the next person who would listen, and then tell the next person until it got to the end, and it was just this combobulated mess that didn't resemble the first phrase at all. What does this have to do with a Laravel application? Well, how can we stop something like that from happening within our code? You might have an action that has just one clear thing that happens, but as the code grows, as your application grows, as your logic grows, you slowly start to add different actions, different pieces of communication, different people saying different phrases all within one file, one action, and it starts to get a little discombobulated. Here, let me show you. In this demo application, users can purchase tickets and then we dispatch this process ticket purchase job, which makes perfect sense, right? And the job logic would go in here. Well, yes, it does, but slowly this job could get out of hand because you might have specific logic about what happens when the ticket is actually purchased. You save stuff to the database. You are updating other pieces of the database and that's why it's happening all in a queue job. But then maybe the user has to be notified. Maybe you are telling them, hey, this ticket has been purchased. And then, okay, maybe the admins need to be notified as well. Maybe you're sending uh, an email to the admins saying, hey, this order has been sent. And then maybe somewhere down the line, uh, your analytics needs to get updated. And then this could go on and on forever because you might have additional people that need to be alerted about this ticket. Well, what can we do about this. And this is where events and listeners really come into play. Events and listeners within Laravel serve as a way to decouple pieces of logic within your code from other pieces of logic that you might not want to have tightly knit together. In this case, my process ticket purchase job that I have is slowly becoming into a game of telephone where different pieces of information is meant for different people. It might not all have the same purpose at the end. Yes, events serve as a great way to decouple various aspects of your application since a single event can have multiple listeners that do not depend on each other. For example, when a ticket is purchased, maybe then I could have listeners to say, okay, now that this ticket has been purchased, I want to notify the admins and I want to uh, notify the user that the ticket is purchased. And I want to also maybe send something to the analytics site or marketing site. And yes, some of that logic might still work and fit best within the process ticket purchase job. But now we have this flexibility to say, I don't necessarily need all of this here. So let's create an event and let's create a listener. PHP artisan make event. And what should the event be named? We can say uh, maybe ticket purchased. So that way it clarifies it a little bit from processing the ticket purchased and just the ticket has been purchased. And now we have this ticket purchased event. Okay, all of this looks pretty standard. An event class is essentially just a data container which holds the information that's related to the event. For example, since in process purchase tickets, I'm notifying a user and I'm sending the type of the ticket that was purchased. Usually this would probably be in a model, but we're just going to say that public uh, string of type can be accepted now in this event. And since this is not an event that we're broadcasting, we're not using this to tell the users of our application that something has happened, I'm just gonna remove this broadcast on and we can just leave it like this. So you can see this event class, it doesn't contain any logic, it just holds that string of type that we're passing to it. And of course, if you were passing models into this, it would serialize that here for us. And this event could also be queued as well. So why don't we make a listener? So we're gonna use PHP artisan make listener, and we could type in the name and actually attach it to an event specifically right here, but we're gonna let Laravel prompts do that for us. So make listener, and we're just going to say, uh, send ticket purchased notification. And we might say notifications if we are sending multiple. Right now, we're just going to focus on the user notification that we sent so that we have a listener for this. So, and this is going to be in the ticket purchased event. And that's what it's listening for. Why don't we take a look? Send ticket purchase notification. That's the listener. So that when this handle, this ticket purchased event happens, we can then do something. So I already have that uh, notification to ticket 
purchased. So why don't we just take that out and push this logic now into the listener. So I'm just going to yank this out here and then I'm going to put that in the send ticket purchased notification. And so now we do need to bring the user in as well as the type. So we have the public uh, user of user and we also have the public string of type bring in the user model, but we do need to send that when we have, or we need to also put that in the event as well. So we're going to say a public user of user. And there we go. And now in our process purchase ticket job, we've abstracted that logic to this own event. So we can say that the ticket has been purchased and we want to dispatch that. Of course, we might be able to push this uh, event being dispatched into the logic of our controller when this process ticket purchase job is run. So that way we're processing the ticket purchased and we were running this ticket purchase event. That really comes down to your personal preference on when you want to dispatch this event. But now everything should work exactly how we expect because now we just abstracted this to its own thing so we don't have that logic in our job. Now the neat part about events is that you can have them being dispatched on model creation. For example, if I was to have a ticket model, and I'll just call this a ticket, and then in my ticket model I can use this protected dispatches events where I can say, okay, when a new ticket is created, and in that sense when a new model is created for this ticket, well I want to then run the ticket purchased event and say, okay, now this event is automatically dispatched when a new model is created. And yeah, it might not work for your particular use case to run an event every single time something happens within a model. It doesn't have to be created. It can be really retrieved, creating, created, updating, updated, saving, saved, deleting, deleted, restoring, restored. There's a bunch of different model events that you can run that specific event on but this is just another way to automatically have this happen and abstract that logic. So events and listeners are just a way to take that logic that you might otherwise have discombobulated within a game of telephone job like this and abstract it, push it into something different. I actually might push this into my controller or in this case, I just have a, a live wire method that I would do here. So process ticket purchase, that's the job, but I'll also uh, send the ticket purchased event as well. And yeah, that makes more sense to me. I can process the ticket and I'm dispatching the event to notify people. This is just a brief look on events and listeners and how you might use them to abstract logic that otherwise might not fit best within a lengthy action class or a job. But check out the description for the full documentation on events and listeners as well. There's really so much that can be customized, especially how listeners are in events can be queuable, but also just how they are dispatched and received as well. If you're a web artisan who just wants to ship, like and subscribe for more tips and videos.